Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. It is indeed an honor and a pleasure to have with us in Al Hikmat studio today Deacon Norman Carroll. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, and it's my pleasure to be here, believe me. It is always a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, just to let our audience know, Deacon, our good friend here. Deacon Norman Carroll is an author of many books, a man with a lot of experience, a lot of travels throughout the world, has done a lot of services in humanity, and we can learn a lot from him. We had him previously on our show, and then we spoke about interfaith issues. Today, we want to talk a little more on a wider scale, humankind and building bridges among human beings, all religions, all races in the world. Uh, Deacon has also been a chiropractic practitioner for over 31 years. Am I correct? Correct. 31 years. He also studied to be a priest for seven years, and he has been serving as a deacon for many years. So, to you all viewers worldwide, it is a pleasure again to have you as viewers, and an honor and pleasure to have the deacon with us in Al Hikmat studio. So, deacon, tell us a little bit about your background. I know we must have shared that in the previous show, but a little bit about where you were born and your upbringing, etc. Well, I was raised in the northeastern part of the United States, uh, born in New Jersey, uh, went to school in Massachusetts. Uh, then um, I entered the Franciscan Seminary of the Roman Catholic Church and studied there for seven years, obtained my degree in philosophy. Uh, following that, um, oh, so you, have, you got a degree in philosophy. Yeah, that's my undergraduate degree is in the philosophy. Wow, that's interesting. And then I had two additional years in theology, and some years after that, got my doctorate in ministry. So I've been to school <laughs> many years in my life. Yes, <laughs> yes, and that's what I was supposed to mention to our viewers here, that you also got a doctorate in ministry. Correct. But that's interesting. You grew up in Massachusetts. So you're in that area of the New England Territory. That's right. Going back to the history of the British when they came through that territory. Yes. Um, and we were speaking before of accents. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so my accent has a dimension to it that's from England. Ah, that speaks volumes. Yes. Massachusetts and New England and the British coming into that area and, and the Irish, down. the Irish coming and the in, Irish and there's, there's Irish blood in me. So that's why your accent is going to be a little more different to the regular Americans that are spread out in different territories. Yes, but more important than the accent is the voice that we use and the words that we speak. Yes, and the attitudes that we have, those are the things that are important. And so I was formed in that uh, early Franciscan tradition. Then after that, I went to school in Chicago um, to become a chiropractic physician, mm -hmm. which I did and practiced in South Florida for 31 years. But my main love has been matters of religion and spirit. And that's why I'm here today. So you love religion. God, people. Healthy religion. Healthy yes. religion. <laughs> and I this, like that. Yeah, I like and that. And this, this is the most recent book that I wrote, The Whole Story, The Wedding of Science and Religion. So w what motivated you to do this book on the whole story, The Wedding of Science and Religion? Because one of the, in our culture, in any culture, there are 
basically four imperatives or four inputs, sources, and these four are political, educational, economic, and religious. And religious is most important because religion demands that the entire person, heart and soul, give himself. While, for example, in economics, we're just speaking of capital. Okay. But religion takes the whole person. So for me to realize that religion and science, which is basically most of us today worship at the altar of science, uh, that these are not getting along when they really have a common goal. They're, they're both looking at truth, but from a different angle, from a different uh, uh, position. Religion has a right to be at the table and to have its voice heard. Um, so, for example, if a person, if a car was um, defective, it might be because of the engine, it might be, be because of the tires, it might be, be because of the driver. But everyone has input and everything has input. We belong together. Mm -hmm. Certainly, mm -hmm. as human beings, we belong together. We share the same nature. And we are supposed to understand that. We yes. need to. And, and religion, the, the heart of religion is to bond us together. That's why the word religion mm -hmm. means a bonding. So it, religion should be drawing you as Muslims and me as a Christian together. And our audience, all of us, whatever our denomination or religion, if it's healthy, it brings us together, not separate. So, from a scientific point of view, what, what do you see out there <coughs> in the world? Do you see people in the scientific world accepting religion? Or do you see more people of religion accepting the scientific world? There is a huge job to be done. They are separate disciplines, both of them. And our role as religious people, and if they understood their role, which they don't, but if they did, their role also is to bring this together. For example, <clears throat> science claims, and I certainly believe, that this universe was created about, oh, 13.6 billion years ago. So scientists then come to the religious people and say, wait a minute, you've got Adam and Eve, and they only go back, in your opinion, uh, several thousand years, and they grew up in a garden called Eden, and that doesn't agree with what we're saying about creation 13.6 billion years ago. How do we bring these stories together? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. And Interesting. so from a religious point of view, we might be able to say, they do indeed belong together. That religion started at the very beginning. That's why even those folks who claim to be non-religious really are religious if they seek truth and love. Truth and love are the things that really matter and they're religious values. And mm -hmm. all people seek truth and love. So all people then are driven to uh, religion because religion is about truth and love. So what about the misconception in people believing that religion happens to be a wall? Now, I, I, I want you to agree with me on this point. I, I, I actually, I cannot tell you to if agree I with can. me, but I'm sure you would agree with me. I'm sure you would, that whatever you have said about religion is supposed to bring people together. Correct. As you were saying before we went on the show about um, the ligon. The, the word religion comes from the word ligare, ligare, which is a Latin word. And that word means to bond. So religion and even by the very word. It means to bond. To bond. So that you and I, if we are of healthy religion, we are drawn together, we are bonded together by our religion. You may be Muslim, 
I may be Christian, another gentleman might be Jewish, and a woman might be Buddhist or whatever. We're all bonded together if we're in healthy religion. Okay, so the point I was getting at in agree and agreeing is that would you agree with me, let me put it like this, that religion is supposed to bond the people together. But unfortunately today, Deacon, there are many people in the world who are using <coughs> religion to separate themselves from others. They're using their religion, their religious teachings, to build wall among themselves. Actually, within the same religion, within the same religion, whether it's Christianity, Judaism, Islam, uh, Hinduism, whatever, you have people who are now going into different areas and finding some teachings that will make them different to the rest of people in their own religion. So they form what is called a sect. And that sect now builds a wall among, I mean, a wall between them and other people on, in their own religion. Then it grows with many walls between the people of one religion and other religion. Oh, I mean, is that healthy or, I mean, or unhealthy? What do you see in your experience? How do you see that? There is a story in the uh, Hebrew Testament uh, of the uh, Hebrews coming into their promised land. And the, one of the first cities they come to is Jericho, the oldest city in the world, mm -hmm. 10,000 years old. And they come to it and they're able to overcome Jericho by following that great motto, that great call, tear down the walls. The walls then came tumbling down. So from the very beginning of humanity, mm -hmm. we of healthy religion have been tearing walls down. And we have been taught to tear walls down. Yes, but we are also getting a message today that we must build walls and not only physical walls, to keep out people from our own physicality. But we have psychological walls. We have mental walls. We have spiritual walls. Yes. For example, we have a wall today which has been raised between Islam and Christianity. Yeah. As, as leaders in our own faiths, our role is to tear that wall down and realize that we, are, we share the same values mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. of compassion and love and nonviolence. Yes. This is what humanity is about. And that brings me to the point, uh, Deacon, of unity and uniformity. And that, to me, is a major misunderstanding in the world. A lot of people believe that unity means uniformity. How do you explain <clears throat> that to our viewers? meaning that we can all be united, but yet keep our independence. Uniformity means that we follow each other's culture, we're together culturally and in every... You, you mean we pray the same way, we eat the same way, exactly, we dress the same exactly. way. Exactly. That's and uniformity. Yes, and it's, it, and it's not a desirable thing. You have a right to your custom, your tradition. I have a right to mine. Our, our viewers, they have a right to their own tradition. But at the heart and soul of all of us are basic values that we share as human beings. All humanity share these values. And these values are compassion and justice. Justice meaning that all people are equal. Justice. We, we share love as a value of, uh, of healthy religion. All of us share that value as human beings. Those values then must govern our religions. And if our religion doesn't reflect those values, then it's not a worthy religion. So as a doctor of ministry, as a deacon, uh, a man who has spent seven years studying to be a priest, and you have at least how many years experience out there as a Christian preacher, 
as a Christian worker. How many years you have there? About 60 years? About 49. 50 years. Wow. Yeah, 50 years. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, with 50 years of experience, a doctor of ministry, a deacon, and, and you are saying, which is so important, and I wish that message could be heard by many more people, and many more people could share that, that yes, we can be independent. We're not supposed to be in uniformity, same way of prayer and eat and dress, etc. But we should be united. As humanity, we have so many more values and so many areas of commonalities. Uh, how do you think we can get this message out to the world? A world, a time where <coughs> everyone wants to build walls. <coughs> and, and, and let's be honest, te technological walls, physical walls, concrete walls. I don't care what kind of walls, but walls in its own ways. Today, we seem to be hell-bent on separation and independence. Um, a great uh, philosopher who died at Auschwitz said that the United States has a statue of um, liberty on its east coast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It should also have on its west coast a statue of responsibility. We have a responsibility to each other. I have a responsibility to you as my brother, a responsibility born of nonviolence, of compassion, of love, so that I could say to you or to the viewers, I love you and really mean it, uh, proportionately, of course, but really mean it. Any time that I would react toward you or to my Muslim brothers or sisters um, in a way that violated love, that's unworthy mm -hmm, of, of mm -hmm. a human relationship. So the walls that we are building today, unfortunately, these are tending to crush this wonderful togetherness and bonding that religion has in its soul. We religionists, particularly religious leaders, but also particularly our viewers, they have an obligation to spread this notion. And sometimes, Sheikh, sometimes it's very costly yes. in terms of yes. pain yes. And, and even sometimes death. Am I willing we, were, we spoke earlier of the word. Am I willing to even give my life for this word, for bridge building? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it is sad to know that some of these walls break hearts. They really break hearts. And when we speak of walls, um, just so people don't misunderstand, we're not talking of physical concrete walls here, even though People literally build no, physical I, concrete walls, but we mean that. Let me tell you a story, uh, very briefly, uh, of a lady who was a um, Muslim. Uh -huh. She came to me some years ago for counseling because she wanted to become a Christian. Mm -hmm. And so here is this lady who's Muslim, for whom I have great respect, for which I have great respect. She wants to become a Christian. Mm -hmm. And she's asking me, what is my opinion? Now our viewers can kind of put their, themselves in my shoes. How do you advise such a woman? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, particularly me, a Christian cleric. So I said back to her, whatever brings you closer to Allah, to God, that's what you want to choose. Oh, very beautiful. And so she remained as a Muslim. Wow, <laughs> and, I like that. And, and became a very more devoted Muslim. Interesting. And took a more, more active role uh, as a Muslim. And, and I think that is so very nice and so very kind of you that, well that you were not biased, you were just real. See, it was us. building a bridge. Yeah. It was building a bridge. And so we sit on opposite sides of a table here but really, that's not true. We really are on the same side. Mm -hmm. We, as human beings, standing up for each other, on the same side, we belong together. 
healthy religion, bonding, see. You know, I never knew that you studied philosophy. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and now I can see where a lot of your ideology and your thoughts and your feelings has that background of philosophy rooted with religion. So you use the philosophy, philosophical learnings <laughs> to express <laughs> the religion in, that you have. In philosophy, <laughs> there are what's known as three transcendental virtues. Yes. And what that means is that everything shares that. And those three are unity, truth, and goodness. Wow. And from those three comes beauty. Unity, truth, and goodness. Right. And, and religion teaches us all about that. Yes. No, we got to go on a short break because it's already approximately 30, 20 or 30 minutes we have been talking. Oh, my God. Yes, <laughs> yes, time just go. Or maybe 20 minutes plus, I think. we got to go on a short break. But before we go on a short break, uh, Deacon, uh, we were discussing that um, situation when you met that woman, that Muslim woman, in Hollywood, Florida, who expressed to you her fear of coming out in public. Would you like to share that with our audience? Yes, it's a very sad story, tragic. Um, some years ago, at the height of anti-Muslim feeling. Was uh, that after 9-11 or so? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, we, I was participant in a demonstration in Young Circle in Hollywood, Florida. Mm -hmm. And the demonstration was to bring people together. Okay. So we were carrying signs, pro-Muslim uh, signs. And um, at the beginning of the demonstration, this lady comes up to me and she said, this is the first time in three years that I have left my home at night. And I asked her, what, uh, what are you speaking of? What, what's, why? She said, because I have been so fearful of going out of my home as a Muslim woman that I wouldn't go out on the streets. But tonight I thought with this pro-human demonstration that I would be safe. And so I put my arm around her and said, you are safe. So what was she afraid of? She was afraid of her white brothers and sisters because there was so much anti-Muslim feeling at that time. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, it's still there today. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. there is also anti-Jewish feeling. Yes. There yes. is anti-Buddhist feeling. One of our uh, politicians some years ago was uh, castigated because of the fact that he visited a Buddhist temple. Oh, you're kidding. It's John Kerry. I mean, it wasn't fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, so there's... But do you think this is all about ignorance or it's just hate or what causes these people to categorize other people as <laughs> non-human as animals, as from, beasts, do you think it's from, education, from, it's from ignorance? A, from a religious standpoint, it comes from how we think of God. Do I think of God as one who is love, or do I think of God as one who demands obedience, or do I think of God as one who punishes? Those are ideas of God. They tend to overcome to color our relationships to each other so that men and women who are designed to complement each other today there's a certain distrust between the genders mm -hmm. it's the role of religion to overcome this distrust overcome that wall and build a bridge between the genders uh, and do you know Deacon there is a, a teachings of that nature in Islam where God says, the prophet peace be upon him says that God says, how you think of me, that's how I would be to you. So the exactly. people who think of God as a loving God, a God of mercy, a God of kindness, a God of bringing 
this humanity and humankind together. A God of forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? And so, my Muslim brother, Islam is worthy. Yeah. And that's coming from a Christian cleric. Islam is worthy, just as worthy as my Christianity, to the degree that each one of us, that all our religions participate in this unity, truth, and goodness. And if we do believe in God and have that belief that God is loving and kind and merciful. And if we live that. We will live that. Mm -hmm. And you know what? God will cause that effect to be into us, that we will reflect that effect mm -hmm. into our actions onto other people and will have love and truth, unity and kindness around us. And so we are called to touch yes. each other yeah. and to hold on to each other and to support each other, whatever our religion. Of course, and <clears throat> that's why God has created us in this world with all these different thoughts and beliefs and philosophies. Listen, I love that example you gave there. I mean, that is phenomenal. And when we come back from this short break, I want to continue a little bit in asking you, because, you know, you're a man of that experience, 50 years out there, um, to share with our audience a little more on this bond of unity and how, what are some of the things we need to do. We have been talking of the, the philosophical points in theory of unity and love and coming together. Now, what are some of the suggestions you have to our viewers worldwide as to how we can make this happen? So stay tuned. We've been talking to Deacon Norman Carl, a doctor of ministry, a man of a lot of experience, and his background, his love for humankind, his services are so much. It's really wonderful, and it's a blessing to have him with us in our Likmut studio. After the short break, we'll continue our conversation a little more on some of his recommendations as to how we can bring down these walls and keep humankind together. Thank you very much. Al Hikmat Services, serving the Muslim community and non Muslim community. Dawah and interfaith activities, distribution of Quran and Islamic publications, sponsoring students to study Islam, Al Hikmat Dai, Dawah and Interfaith Institute. Also, Friday sermons by Sheikh Shafaid are live on alhikmatv.com from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Download our free Al Hikmat TV app on your mobile devices. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Feel free to donate to Al Hikmat Dawah services online with a credit card or PayPal at alhikmat.com. For more details, contact Al Hikmat office at 1-800-804-0267 or our local number 954 986 0158 and visit us at www.alhikmat.com. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Once more, it is indeed a pleasure to have with us in Al Hikmat studio Deacon Norman Carroll. I'm enjoying this so much. Thank you. It's really <laughs> a pleasure. I'm enjoying it and I'm sure our viewers would definitely learn a lot from your experience and your philosophy and your religious background and 49, 50 years of experience <laughs> in spreading the word. So, uh, you know, talking about unity and building bridges and, you know, this is a little beyond interfaith talk. I know a lot of people and we and we all do interfaith and we try to encourage people to do interfaith activities, etc., etc., etc. But we're talking a little beyond that, and that is the aspect of making this combination of understanding in areas of commonalities and building this unity in humanity. We were talking before we got on the show about the, wo the word Pope and the connection and the mission and what is expected when it comes to unity. Would you like to share that with our audience? Because I don't think a lot of people 
know that. They just look at the Pope as the head of the Roman Catholic Church, and that's it. The Pope is known as the Pontiff, the Supreme Pontiff. Mm -hmm. In fact, they glory in that title. And the reason they do is because the word pontiff means a bridge builder, again from Latin words. So, um, for example, we have the word pontoons, mm -hmm. forming a bridge. So the Pope views himself and his church as one that builds bridges. So you're saying that the Pope is expected by just his name to build bridges. Exactly. Oh. But the interesting part, and more important really, is the fact that each of us is called to be a pontiff, a bridge builder. Everyone has that responsibility to build bridges between those who are hostile, those who don't know each other, those of another faith, whatever, to reduce and minimize this separation and independence. So it is expected then from the Pope to make that effort, go that nine yards to build bridges, which is what the Pope does, and I, we must give credit. In uh, many cases, the, the Pope does go out to different countries and try to extend the olive branch and bring people together and better understanding. But I think... He's right now in the United Emirates Emirates. Yes, the Pope does that and, and that explains why the Pope goes out to different countries and places of difficulties and create that opportunity and establish that opportunity to bring people together and a better understanding. But don't you think it will be much more, or in addition, much more interesting if the Pope would really encourage a lot of our Christians and our, yes, humankind people, Muslims, Jews, everybody, that they need to break down these walls and build bridges. I think the Pope, for one person, is doing what he can, this particular Pope in mm -hmm. particular. But I think in the end, it comes down to what we do as human beings. But, 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 but you got my point. He does it, and that's what I said before. Yes. I know he does it. But what I'm saying is that I think the, as, as that powerful leadership, and, and it's expected from the Muslim world also, I'm not saying no, need to use his power, his authority, because the Pope carries a lot of weight and power and authority in encouraging leaders, not just religious leaders now, political leaders, social leaders. To but, uh, let, let's speak of, of the political for a moment. Uh, we have today in the United States an administration that is intent on building walls. Mm. <laughs> now, I hate to say that, and I, uh, I don't mean anything of a partisan nature, but the facts speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. And if we are in the business, we who are in religion, of tearing walls down and building bridges, then we should, at least in our political system, support those candidates who radiate competence and bridge building. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones whom we should support. Then in terms of education, um, I'm very embarrassed to say that I went through 12 years of secondary education and seven years in a seminary and I did not understand the very first thing about Islam. I knew nothing. There had been no bridge building. So in our education, why can't we have bridge building and open ourselves to worthy ideas from other faiths? In the world of yeah. And religion, that should be done through education, of course. Yes. So we've got politics, we've got education, economics. I was um, amazed. Uh, I was giving a retreat in Chicago, Illinois, oh, I guess about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And down the street, there was um, an Islamic temple. And um, 
the church in which I was in was very poor. So I asked the pastor, I said, how do you manage to keep going? And he said, my Muslim brothers and sisters support us from down the street economically. They send me a check every two weeks. Wow. And then I began to think about this. What about if economically we supported each other? What about if families supported each other? A family in one street helped a family who didn't have very much on the next street. Isn't this building bridges? And isn't this really true bonding that religion speaks of? Of course. Of I mean, course. That's kind of and that's what I meant when I said, you know, in the high esteem that the Pope has, and political leaders do respect the Pope. There is not really a country that the Pope goes into and from the head of state do not become on attention and do not make every possible arrangements for welcoming the Pope. And I think the Pope is in a good position, very good position, blessed position, that especially with the situation the world is into right now, the political chaos, the disharmony, the hate, the enmity, the walls that have been built, because we keep on talking of walls. And I think as the Pope does that, and as the Pope uh, lives that, with his strength and his authority, maybe if he would advise them, uh, they, they may not take the advice, but at least it will go, get somewhere that they need, politicians especially, especially politicians and community leaders need to work towards building bridges and not building walls. Yes, and certainly uh, my feeling at least is that this particular pontiff is fulfilling his calling of trying to build bridges. My concern is that is that message filtering down yeah. through clerics and through the people. Uh, that's the that's point. <laughs> really, that's really where the tire hits the road. I think that's where uh, the problem is. And um, certainly as religious leaders, we're obliged, we have a duty to promote these ideas. And I, for one, do not understand, nor will I accept, the role of some of my co-Christians in the United States mm -hmm, who mm -hmm. are supporting the building of walls. But as you said, we are all pontiffs in our own world. That's right. That's <laughs> I right. like that. That's that right. is so very powerful, so very well said. We live in a time, Deacon, where internet, internet, social media has made this world really what it is, one land. You know, once upon a time, people knew themselves about I am from this country and it has no clue of another country except what you saw in the books and you read in school, in geography. Not even the news would give you details of other countries once upon a time. Now you can get on your phone and you know what's going on everywhere in the world. You know what's the time in a different country. But, but the point I'm getting at, thank God, God has used this technology to make people in the world realize that we are really one earth. Human beings are citizens of this one earth. There is nothing like passports and nationalities and religions and visas that separate us. That's uh, true, but, but I could have the most sophisticated computer of anyone. Mm -hmm. And if I do not Google Islam and have no interest in Islam, then what good is it? I like I, that. I've got to reach out. You've got to make the effort. Yeah, each one of us must. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, um, I like that point. Even though we have all of this and the world has become much smaller, better understanding, the point you're making, each one of us need to make that effort. You have it in your hands, the internet, but if you don't Use search it, it and you it. don't look Use for it, it right. you will still be ignorant. I and you will still be surrounded by walls. Yes. And there's a story in the Hindu tradi uh, tradition that uh, says a woman came to her um, mentor, her religious mentor, mm -hmm. and said, I just cannot find any love for God. 
I just don't see God. I can't find him at all. I, I'm lost. And he said, well, do you love anyone? She said, well, I love my nephew. What's that got to do with it? Mm -hmm. He said, you love your nephew. Therefore, you love God. In other words, God is in our relationships, mm -hmm. in our love. And if I, if I am a worthy Christian, mm -hmm. then I have an obligation to reach out in love to my Islam brothers and sisters. And so they to me. And so we all tend to come together and we all are building bridges. And that's what is really necessary. And I think that's what we need to do. Uh, I mean, a lot of these organizational structures are so very politically designed that in itself it's a wall. Mm, yeah. I mean, I know we're talking a lot about wall, but that's the point. We, we want to get the understanding of bridges. Well, see, religions can become walls too. For example, my church is greater than your temple. That's building a wall. Yeah. And so, or my church is better than your church. My church, it's, everything is about me and my and ego. It's time for us to cast that aside and reach out to the other person in yeah. genuine love. I think that's what is missing nowadays. I, I really love that example you gave. We can have the internet and we can know what's going on in another part of the world. But if we don't search to know more about what is Islam, what is Judaism, what is Christianity, what is Hinduism, what is humanity, we will not understand, we will not know, we'll see it. You know, as God yes. says in the Quran, you will have eyes, but you won't see. Yeah. You'll be blind. Yeah. A lot of us, we got ears, we don't hear. We used to have newspapers and radios, but if we never read or listen, what, so, what sense does it so make? with the computer, we really should be reaching out with that great technology, technology to other people. It's all about people. Yeah, we should use that opportunity to reach out, better understand, mm. and we'd be a better people. And that in itself, I know we have mentioned the word walls a lot of time, but that education, that love, that understanding will automatically dissolve whatever walls are surrounding us <laughs> from better understanding and better living with people in the world and around us. To be honest, Sheikh, to be honest, if we build walls around our country, then I hope to God people will have the sense of digging under, flying over, and going around the walls. Yeah. The walls themselves must vanish. The walls between us, between our viewers, vanish. And each of us, a duty to tear down the walls in our own life. Uh, it is so interesting, Deacon, that you know, God has created this earth and you got so many millions and billions of people, but God did not build walls around people. No, no walls. It is mankind, <laughs> humankind, no, no who have built the walls, put up all the laws, made the separation, and brought all this among themselves. It is unfortunate. And mankind did this because they couldn't handle it. No man can control this whole entire earth by himself. So I can see why you need your little wall and your little country and your little visa and your little restrictions and your economical situation. But that's okay. But that does not mean that that should separate us from other people. This takes us back to those basic values that we spoke of earlier, that we share of the unity, the truth, and the goodness. This is what we're meant for. This is humanity. Yeah, yeah. And all human beings share these. Yes, it's sad. Last but not least, you know, before we conclude the show and we are just on the countdown, we just got about two or three minutes again to count down. Um, it is so sad we are speaking about the entire world, Deacon, and the whole world and all the religions in the world. But unfortunately, people have walls even in their own homes. Huh? Yes. Once upon a time, there were always walls in a home, but they did not live as though there were walls. Now, you know, <laughs> the, 
They are such about the walls are so strong that people in one house under one roof, and I mean husband, wife, and children, and they don't know what goes on. They don't communicate with each other. It, it is so sad. Once upon a time, parents and children knew when each one it, were going to eat, drink, sit together, talk together, yeah. share together. No, everything is done so separate. Nobody doesn't even know what goes on. These are the spiritual and psychological walls that are far more important than any physical wall. Yeah. But so, but like, if we have to conclude, I, I would just like to tear down one wall. Yes, anyway. you got the last word. You and go I'd ahead. like to say to you that um, I salute you as an Islamic leader. I salute my Muslim brothers and sisters, and I give you my word that I will do whatever I can to tear down the walls that have encumbered Islam and the wonderful Muslim brothers and sisters that I know. Thank you very much, Deacon. And again, uh, a man like you, uh, doctor of ministry, a deacon, someone who studied for seven years to be a pastor, uh, 31 years as a chiropractic practitioner, I mean, you have lived it. You have traveled. You have had how many? Over 200 retreats, you said? Yes. Over. All over the United States of America? Yes. I mean, your experience, your community services, your religious background. I wish your advice. And my books. And your books. This book you have on religion and science. Mm -hmm. Or oh, the wedding. The wedding between religion and science. I love it. I love it. And I'm going to show the world this. The whole story which is the wedding of science and religion. You want to get a copy of this, contact us at Al Hikmat office, contact us at Al Hikmat office. Or Amazon. Or Amazon. Right. And you will get it direct from our friend and colleague here, Deacon Norman Carroll. And you see his name at the bottom here? Religion and science, the wedding between religion and science. But the most important thing that we all live this, see, we, we live the bonding. The bonding of this. A man of great experience, philosophy, education, practical upbringing. So it has been a pleasure to have him with us on the show in Al Hikmat studio. We look forward to having him with us again. And we're going to have a lot more programs and activities with the Deacon. So thank you very much for viewing. Thank you very much, Deacon, for being with us on the show. And stay tuned to Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.